Andrew Jordan's list first. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to join us, but he has a list for us, and we'll talk about it between Dom and I. Um, so his honorable mentions. Uh, first off, we have Telltale Batman. I didn't play this. I'm going to get around to it now that the holiday breaks on us and Episode 5 came out. Uh, you play this, Dom, so do you think this deserves to be an honorable mentions at the very least? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, this is some of Telltale, uh, Telltale's best work. Of course, I haven't played Tales from the Borderlands or Wolf Among Us, which are supposed to be pretty good as well. But this is right up there with Walking Dead for me. So, Yeah. Uh, next up on his honorable mentions, Witcher 3 Blood and Wine, which technically isn't a new game. A lot of people make the argument because there's like a lot of content there, and it's bigger than some games. But uh, he has Witcher 3, Shocker. Uh, Jordan put something with Witcher 3 in his list. Um, I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't play Blood and Wine yet. I haven't even finished Witcher 3 yet, but I've heard great things, so it's not, no surprise there. Um, I wonder uh, what the percentage of people who started that game finished it. I don't know. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, and, like, a lot of people made the case of, like, it's too dense, yada, yada. We've gone over that plenty of times before. For me, it was just, like, something else came out. I don't remember what, and then I never got back to it. But it's definitely a game I need to go back and finish because uh, it's it's a gorgeous game. It's super well made, and it's a shame that I haven't gone back to play it. Will I 100% it or beat it? I don't know, but I want to get back to actually playing it um, one way or the other. Um, the other two honorable mentions on his list are two indie games. Uh, Severed from um, the guys who make Guacamelee. Um, Drink? Uh -huh. Yeah, Drinkbox, I believe. That is them? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's the the one where it's like, uh, it came out on Vita, and it's like a like a hallway or like tunnel navigation where you like move left and right and stuff like that. It looked mm -hmm. pretty interesting. A lot of people liked it a lot. Um, and Fury, which I'm not too familiar with. Um but it was a hit on PlayStation, I believe. A lot of people did like Fury. Um, yeah, it was a free PS Plus game, I believe. Ooh, so I didn't uh, play it ever, but yeah. That's going to get uh, in a lot of people's minds if it's out there for free, so that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get into his actual top five. Uh, coming in at number five is Overcooked. This is, uh, we talked about a couple of times this year, Dom, you uh, want the return of Couch Co-op. Um, you feel that, like, oh, I think a lot of people feel as if Couch Co-op was kind of going away, and it seems like now it's coming back. And Overcooked is a great exercise in couch co-op patience. Uh, a lot of people love it. Uh, if you're not familiar, it's a game where two people on the same screen, or up to four people, I believe. It's one to four people. Um, and you work in teams trying to make dishes and get them out on time, and there's a timer. And it kind of works with that whole star system. So if you do really good and you get perfect, you get three stars. If you do okay, you get two stars. One, you, uh, terrible, you get one star. Um, Overcooked seems like a cool game. I never got around to playing it. It's on almost every platform. Uh, did you get a chance to play Overcooked, Dom? No. Um, I don't want to play it by myself. I don't think that's how it's meant to be played, although I think there is an option for that. But yeah, definitely don't want to play it with other people because I'm not someone who has a lot of patience with others. <laughs> I, I just know <laughs> yeah. that yeah. this would just cause huge issues in my household if I were to turn it on. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it'll do more damage than good, right? Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So if you're gonna be playing this, definitely play with somebody that either they know you have good patience, or you know they have good patience, or yeah, they're okay with you not being patient. Uh, right, if they, a, they're okay with being yelled at, and they yeah. understand that. Yeah, in the heat of the moment. Yeah, exactly. Uh, number four, this is a game you had experience with, uh, House Marks Alien Nation. Uh, this came out earlier in the year. Uh, I, I believe uh, a lot of people felt that it wasn't as good as Dead Nation, but it still was a pretty solid game, right? Yeah, I never played Alien Nation. I did play Dead Nation this year. Dead Nation, my bad, okay. But they're similar enough. Uh, I mean, it's the same game, right? Just aesthetically, there are different environments, different setting and all that, and it's just a PS4 game, whereas Dead Nation is a Vita game. I'm sure it looks quite a bit better, too, but same idea, twin-stick shooter kind of thing. Um, yeah. Dead Nation was really fun, but yeah, I... And I think a lot of people did like Alienation too. But. I think uh, some of the complaints were they made it a little bit unnecessarily obtuse. Like, I think some people, uh, some people felt that Dead Nation was good the way it was, and it seems like Alienation was overcomplicated for no reason except for being complicated. But um, it still was a solid game. It got high marks. Um, so number three on his personal list, he has Final Fantasy 15. So last time we talked to Jordan, he said he wasn't too far in. I think he said like an hour and a half. So over the course of the last couple of weeks, he's probably put some more time into that. I haven't played it yet. It's a game I want to get around to. We've talked about it numerous times. I'm not familiar with Final Fantasy. I want to jump in somehow, but it's kind of like that Metal Gear Solid situation. A little bit different, obviously, because it's not one whole story, but uh, they're all different. But, yeah, it's it's interesting. Final Fantasy 15 definitely has a lot of people giving it high praise. 
and a lot of people saying that it's an okay game and it's weird what they're doing with the updates of kind of completing the story right so what's your what's your interpretation of final fantasy 15 yeah kind of the same as you because i've never touched anything in the entire series ever um and this seems like it's as good of an entry point as any of the games in the series but if you look back like before this um what like what final fantasy game am i going to go back and play today it's just not like as someone who never played any older jrpgs like none of them are just going to hold up yeah, so this would be a good spot to jump in. I'm very, really curious about it. I was surprised at how, uh, how well it was received critically. So, yeah, I'm kind of curious too. I might pick it up one day if it's on sale. Well, I think the big thing too is it's not turn-based combat anymore, really. So that's a, an easier entry point for people who are not familiar with JRPGs. And also, uh, if I don't get around to this, final the Final Fantasy VII remake is definitely the the one I will get into, just because. That, yep. Yeah, I definitely want to do that as well. Final Fantasy XV has been in development for so long, and it was unsure if it was going to be good. A lot of people do think it's good, which is awesome, but Final Fantasy VII is regarded as a great game, you know? Some people think that other Final Fantasies are better, but they never say that it's a bad game, and as long as they don't do too much to it, um, I, I'm definitely in for Final Fantasy VII, so it's not too surprising 15's on his list. Uh, Jordan likes his JRPGs. Um, number two, Ratchet & Clank. This is the remaster slash uh, up res of uh, Ratchet and Clank with a few minor tweaks. Um, beautiful. Apparently, it looks even more gorgeous on a PS4 Pro. Uh, you played Ratchet and Clank, so him having it too is that a surprise or do, is that you know? No, no, it's a great game, <clears throat> and it, I would have anticipated he had this high on his list, um, knowing he loves third-person action games. Um, it, this it just looks so good, and it's hard to say much else about it, but it just looks so it's so pleasant to look at. It just makes you feel good. And then it's also fun. There's lots of cool, uh, creative, different kinds of weapons. Um, you know, it's a fun little game. Yeah, I don't right think up Jordan's alley. Yeah, I think it's a. I think it's a great experience, and I think it's a, like for better or worse, video game junk food of like you know a lot of people who bought that game already played it the first time around. So it's like I just want to re-experience it the way I imagined it in my head and not the way it actually looked. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm not surprised there. Number one is this condom break. Uh, this isn't a surprise either. He's talked about this being his game of the year for a long time, and it was kind of going to be surprising if anything passed it. He loves superhero games. Um, you know, the he owns a PlayStation. His family also owns an Xbox. So it's interesting that an Xbox One exclusive is his game of the year. Uh, if you didn't notice, uh, shocker to most people, Jordan didn't have Uncharted Four on his list. Which, if you follow the show, that's not surprising. Uh, he has his own opinions on that, but um. Yeah, Quantum Break's a solid game. I'll probably get into it more when we talk about it, because uh, it is on my list, spoiler alert. But, uh, yeah, it's a solid game. It does feel like a superhero game without the guy being technically a superhero. So I understand completely why he enjoyed this game. Uh, the shooting mechanics are great. Uh, the time powers are great. Um, yeah, so it's it's interesting that this isn't getting talked about more for people's uh, Game of the Year lists. Um, as far as it being on the list, I doubt it'll be on a, a majority of people's The Game of the Year, but... It seems like it's getting forgotten, and I do think it's a, a very solid game. So, 